Hello, my name is Minnie Valentine and uh, this is my curly hair routine. I'm calling it 3 AAA because, well, my curls are very, very large. I don't know if you... Well, it's hard to see anything with <laughs> the dark hair and also the dark background, but my curls are quite big. So I'm making it up and calling them 3 AAA or 3 AA. One of the two. Anyhow, so this is gonna be um, kind of a transitioning routine because um, I discovered last year that my hair was curly and um, I was not able to have a consistent or reliable routine until the end of June this year. Until last year, I didn't know that my hair was even curly. I thought my hair was wavy my entire life. Because <laughs> my parents are both on the opposite ends of the spectrum, kind of. My mom has super straight Asian hair, my dad had curly hair. And obviously my hair didn't look like either their hair, so I just thought I was in between and I was wavy. So last year, at the end of August, I found out that my hair was curly, and um, I didn't get my curl routine down, this routine, until the end of September. Um, so I'm kind of considering this transitioning because I feel like every time that I tried to style my hair before it just looked like a disaster. So this routine that I'm going to show you is the most reliable routine where every time you do it my hair looks like this for the most part. Um, so I'm going to be talking like this and I'm going to show demo clips of doing my hair. The demo clips I'm going to show you are from a different day but I do all of the steps. Um, exactly the same. And I'll also include here a couple of clips of a different watch today where I did the same routine and so you can see what my hair looks like. I think today's watch came out okay. So before I get started, I guess I'll mention my hair type. My hair is uh, low porosity and it's somewhere on the spectrum of medium to coarse. My hair's not fine at all. <laughs> but I don't know if it's coarse enough to be coarse, but it's not fine. So the two uh, factors that make styling my hair the most challenging are the length. My hair is super long, it goes past my hips. This hair is quite long and it's also low porosity, which means my hair takes 85 years to dry. <laughs> and also, it is uh, December when I'm filming this, so the coldness makes it even more difficult to dry my hair. And the summer it took me at least an hour to blow dry my hair. And now it takes even longer. Now I feel like it doesn't even get dry, you know. It just, I just have to let it be wet. <laughs> I just can't dry it, man. Okay, so let's just get on to the routine now. I have zero idea what I even said so far. I have all my products right here. <laughs> but So the first thing that um, I do on my wash day is shampoo and condition my hair. Um, I like to use this Hask brand. Um, I use the this Shea Butter version. Um, for my shampoo, and I use this Minoy coconut oil uh, conditioner. This conditioner doesn't have that much slip, so I don't think I would repurchase this necessarily. And then I also use this. I got this to try because my hair is not dark enough <laughs> for me, and so I wanted to try this. I think it works, even though my hair is virgin. Um, I feel like I can tell a difference, especially on the ends of my hair that are, to me, noticeably lighter than the rest of my hair. But this also doesn't have good slip, so usually I will just pour a bunch of this into my hair. I usually use a wet brush to detangle my hair in the shower. Um, and then I will use this raw sugar hair mask, um, which I really like. This does not have any proteins in it, but I do quite like this, and it's not super expensive. And it's really, um, like, emollient, so I feel like a little bit goes a long way. Um, and this isn't super scented, which I like. I will only wash my hair once a week, so I use this every wash day. And I feel like this has made a really, really big difference, especially if you have low porosity hair, at least in my experience, because if you don't get enough moisture in the, your rinse out products, then you have to apply it with your leave-in products. And then with low porosity hair, products really just sit on top of the hair. So if you, know, you get enough moisture with this and then rinse it out, it's less on your hair, you know? So at the start of styling, I do like my hair to be pretty wet, so I will spray it down with water if I need to. People will say like if you squeeze your hair you should be able to hear something. If it's just dripping water everywhere, then I will take my microfiber towel and squeeze some of the water out. So the first styling product that I use is this BioSilk Silk Therapy 17 Miracle. So I apply about this much product, um, 
and then I apply it to the bottom half of my hair and then I apply this, the same amount to the top part of my hair and I always make sure to get like right up um, in my hairline because um, my hair is like the frizziest on the top and also I have this a section here that's a little bit higher porosity then I will um, brush that product through my hair I got this from Marshalls, it was ten dollars and I've seen it sold in like Bed Bath Beyond for twenty dollars so I would definitely recommend going to some kind of Marshalls or TJ Maxx or something and also wet brushes are there and Marshalls and they're like three or four five dollars so and they come in cuter patterns so also Marshalls is a really good place to go if you're on a budget and then I will section off the top part of my hair then I apply my curl cream so I like to put it in a pump bottle because it's easier to remember how much product they're using if you're like measuring it with like I use one pump or two pumps for the section or something like that um, instead of eyeballing it because I'm not good at that. I'm going to apply one pump to each of the three sections of my hair. I have the two on the bottom and then the top one. I'm using the Maui Moisture Curl Smoothie um, which does not have any proteins in it. So recently I've been using my Denman brush to help me brush style but um, I easily can use this brush. Um, I like to only use three rows in my Devon brush because um, my curl is quite big. I get really small stringy little clumps if I have too many rows in this. So. so for the bottom layers I will split that entire section in half and then half again. I have a really big curl so I can take big sections. If you have a smaller curl you're, you're gonna have to take smaller sections. So first I elevate my hair 90 degrees from my head and then I use my Denman brush to brush through and create tension in the hair. It's kind of hard to do this in my longest layer because my hair is almost the same length as my arm, so it's hard to maintain that even tension. Okay, so here is the transitioning part of my routine. I keep my hair elevated and then I finger coil, so I will try to uh, curl my finger or close as close to my roots as I can get it and then I'm gonna hold the end of my hair while twirling my finger and pushing it down the length of my hair. On this side of my head, my curl goes away from my face. Most of my curls go in the same direction, so I'll curl on this side, it's going away from my face, and then on the other side it goes towards my face. You really want to keep your finger moving in this. If you don't move your finger, you just tighten your finger in that space and you it's just stuck in that place. Usually once the end of my hair that I'm holding gets like twirled into that section, then I'll just push my finger all the way down and it will curl very nicely like this. For the sections further in the back, I attempt to kind of angle it away, like radially away from my head, because otherwise I get this annoying splitting thing. The hair wants to fall in the way that you're styling it, so if you're styling it this way, it will want to come this way, you know, rather than being together and you can't just see this divide in the back of your hair. <laughs> So I'm just going to continue doing that for the rest of the bottom sections of my hair. It's pretty fast because there's only technically eight little sections that I'm doing. Because my hair is super long, I'd rather do less sections because it's easier to stay in control <laughs> and manage all of my hair. If I have just a bunch of smaller sections, it just it just gets out of control a lot of the time. And it's just faster if I'm, you know, finger coiling less sections and then if I want to when it's dry, I can separate them. So I'd rather style less sections and then, you know, I can break them I can break up the clumps if I want to. Again, this is my most reliable routine. If I finger coil my hair, I know it'll look good. For me, every time that I've just brush styled my hair, it's like up to chance. Like, it might just look like a hot, stringy, nasty mess. So if I for sure want my hair to look nice, um, I will finger coil. Now that I'm on the top, I'm gonna apply my one pump of curl cream and then brush it through. I start from like the center of my head and I'll draw a diagonal line. So I'll do basically the same thing as the bottom sections but I'll go up and I'm twirling um, my finger away from my face I guess and I'll just go from one side to the other until I have like one little triangle section in the front. I could change the angle a little bit the way that I angled it for this video that I shot so I maybe would do more this way as opposed to like this way but you know. As of right now I like to let my top section fall forward because um, of the way that I apply gel and to stay organized 
I would rather let it fall back, but it's just easier to apply the gel more evenly. So this is the first routine that worked for me. So things like this, kind of like, I may not always have to do it this way. So I didn't get a clip of this, but um, now that it's cold, <laughs> I take a microfiber towel at this point and I will scrunch some of the water out of my hair. I feel like it doesn't really help with the drying time, but you know, <laughs> maybe it does, I don't know. Whenever I scrunch my hair, I like to let it coil up in my hand like this because my curl is so big. If I blindly scrunch my hair, usually it'll like ruin the curl and then sometimes it'll be like the curl will be going one direction and then it'll be straight and then it'll be going the other direction so i basically do this but just pretend like there's a towel in my hand really tried to get as much water as i can um my hair does need to be wet when i'm styling it especially when i'm finger coiling it but after i've done the finger coiling i can get rid of this excess water in my hair i prefer to do this before I apply the gel because then I just end up scrunching all the gel out of my hair. Doing this also helps me get a little bit of a better cast in my hair. And now speaking of gel, um, I like to glaze and scrunch gel into my hair. So for the bottom layer, I'll take four pumps of gel, which look like this. I use the um, Eco Style Olive Oil Gel. Um, yeah, and I put this in a pump bottle again because I feel like it makes it a little bit easier to keep track of how much product I'm applying. But if you do want to put this particular gel into a pump bottle, this chamber guy needs to be really, really big. And I spray a little bit of water into it. So I will glaze it over my hair like this and then I will, then I'll apply another four pumps and then coil this entire half bottom section into my hand and just try to scrunch and just wipe off as much gel as I can onto my hair. And then for the top section, um, I put only four pumps on the top um, and do the same thing. I glaze and then scrunch and I make sure to get my hairline all of this stuff that I just um, described, usually I can get done in between 20 and 30 minutes. So after I um, rinse my deep conditioner out of my hair, I am ready for the blow dryer in 20 to 30 minutes. And then the rest of my routine is just attempting and failing to dry it. So I like to start off with scrunching my hair. If I hover first and my hair um, gets like in a cast, it's really difficult to scrunch it and my hair is really long and heavy so it just, the curls get really elongated and then it's just, I can't scrunch it. If I try to do that, I try to shove it in my diffuser, I end up breaking the cast and then uh, my hair is ruined. So I will scrunch my hair and that same way I'll coil it into the diffuser. Sometimes I'll put it in my hand because I can see better the diffuser is dark and my hair is dark so it's kind of hard to see but I'll coil it into my hand and then place it into the diffuser um, I just got this diffuser attachment recently and I really really like it um, it's much more suitable for my hair also this holds my hair these prongs on the outside kind of act like a wall so I can just get all of my hair on the bottom like my longest bottom layer I can get into here with the diffuser attachment that came with this um, I got my hair stuck in the back of this a million times because I just couldn't my hair didn't fit in here and then even if it, I did scoop it up it would end up like tumbling out and then getting caught in the back of this thing super annoying but with this that has not happened one time since I got this so I actually have an interval timer for when I scrunch my hair like this. I do seven minutes on each of the bottom sections and then I do five on the top section. I do this on a low heat and a high speed. So after I scrunch my hair um, with a diffuser like that, I will hover diffuse. Um, and this is the way that I set up my hover diffuse situation. I have a separate video on that if you want to see how I do this. It is a total life changer for me because again, uh, it takes me well over an hour to dry my hair, even with high speed the whole time and using medium heat. So while I'm hover diffusing, I do like to use a wide tooth comb to kind of um, try to get some volume in my roots. So I'll use the comb to kind of like do this kind of thing to kind of pull my roots up off of my scalp. And sometimes I'll just like leave the comb in my roots like this. 
it works better when my hair is wet and heavy, but I'll just like leave it like this. I also try to flip my hair from like side to side and front to back. And I mentioned earlier that my hair sometimes will divide in the back. So I'll also use my white tooth comb to kind of brush out that separation in the back like this, kind of comb over that, that part in the back. Then a million hours later, when it's 90% dry, maybe, I'll scrunch the gel cast out of my hair with a serum. And before scrunching, it's super important to wait till your hair is dry before you break your cast, because otherwise your all of everything that you did to style your hair will be for nothing. Your hair will be ruined and it will have it won't last past day one, maybe even like 20 minutes. My hair does this super annoying thing and if this happens to anybody else, please tell me about it because um, it's super annoying. My hair will feel 100% dry. Like if I blow dry it for an hour, it feels dry. I'll put cold air on it, like from my blow dryer and it will not feel cold. And then like 10 minutes later, 20 minutes later, it'll be damp again. So I basically never know when my hair is dry <laughs> and I'll sleep on it and my hair will be like damp and it's super annoying. Well, I washed my hair last night at like midnight and now it's like 10 p.m. the next day. I blow dried my hair for like an hour and 20 minutes so I just gave up. I usually don't like to put my hair in a bonnet if my hair is still not dry all the way because it gets like squished. I usually would just kind of lay my hair above my head so that I'm not sleeping on top of it, on top of a scarf. And I feel like that usually doesn't squish my curls. Usually on day one, my hair just is never 100% dry. I just can't do it. <laughs> so if it gets dry enough, um, I will go ahead and scrunch it out with a hair serum. I use the Garnier Sleek and Shine one. And I put it in a bottle like this. Slope frosty, I don't really need a lot. And then I'm just going to glaze it over my hair. I like to start off with half a pump. If I put too much, that's just the end of it, you know? I can always add more. Products really just sit on top of my hair, so. My hair 100% doesn't feel dry all the way, but you know, <laughs> you just have to give up at some point. <laughs> okay, I think that's scorched out enough. Can't see anything. It's just dark, but well, look how fluffy it is. <laughs> Oh my god, I love it. I don't know if it's gonna look like this tomorrow because it's not dry all the way, but <laughs> I love it. Okay, so... So I'm super distracted by the fact that I mixed my foundation a little bit dark. Oh, it feels like there's so much static in me. Okay, too yellow or something, I don't know. Anyway, am I recording? Yeah. <laughs>